And in tonight's spotlight, Ezekiel Elliott's big payday. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, in his own words there, talking about the tough negotiations and how Ezekiel scored a massive six-year, $90 million contract extension that makes him a top-paid running back in the NFL. Now, joining the conversation tonight on Elliott's record-breaking deal is DailyNational.com sports editor Mike Bako. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me. Or listen, I, I want to jump into it. Uh, Elliott says that it was important for him to be the highest-paid mm -hmm. running back in the league. Let's, let's listen very quickly before we launch in to what exactly he said here. When it important for you to be the highest paid running back in football? Uh, it was. Why? Because um, I believe I'm the best. There it is. He there. believes he's the best. All right, so uh, that being said, is it worth that kind of money, this, this position, this contract, Zeke? This position, no. This contract for the Cowboys, yes. They have a very small window right now where they have Dak Prescott, where they have Amari Cooper, where they have Ezekiel Elliott, and they have a stacked roster this year. And you saw Jerry Jones there speaking yep. a little bit before. He's also seeing almost the finish line of his ownership with the Cowboys in the sense of can he win another Super Bowl? Certainly he has two in his back pocket, but those are really credited to Jimmy Johnson back in the early 90s. But many, many years of playoff futility. He's more known as an owner who's been striking deals to benefit the Dallas Cowboys as a business entity rather than the success on the field. So he had to do this as the owner of the Cowboys. But if you really look at it from a roster construction standpoint and just from what, where the salary cap is going, and he mentioned earlier in that clip, Ezekiel Elliott has had a lot of carries under his belt. So mm. they're going to really run him into the ground. Also mentioned, he runs around the locker room like a pony. Well, guess what? <laughs> they're going to try to ride him like a thoroughbred for these next few years while this contract is really taking hold of their salary cap. Well, so you've got this big $50 million guarantee in there. So, I mean, what kind of precedent is that? Well, it's, a, it's not that much of a precedent because just a few years ago, Todd Gurley of the uh, NFC champion Rams had $45 million guaranteed. Now, the big thing about him is he's had injury troubles. Mm -hmm. He didn't even start the Super Bowl when they played against the Patriots. They found a running back to supplant him while he was injured during last season. So I think the enlightened front office is seeing that the running back position, it can be replaceable. But when you have a world-class talent like Elliott, that's one where you do give the money to him and you do try to ride him for these next few years. And he also makes Dak, Dak Prescott a better quarterback because not as much attention is placed on him from a defensive scheme standpoint. All right, let's switch gears very quickly because we got some tennis to talk about also over Flushing Meadows. Uh, you've got uh, Serena Williams earning her 100th singles win at mm -hmm. the U.S. Open. Uh, I mean, that's a milestone for her, obviously. She's got a couple more to, to break the, a record there. Um, does she win at all? What do you think? I think right now without Osaka on the other side of that draw, she's obviously, even as the eighth seed, she's really the favorite. Not only the favorite for from a fan perspective, they want to see her win again, but also just from, you know, she knows what to expect when you get to these finals, when you get to these semifinals. So I think not only from a skill standpoint, but also from just knowing what is to come, she's got to be the favorite. Let's talk about another tennis star who's making some headlines here for a different reason. Uh, you've got the headline in the New York Post, I'm sure you've seen this, reads, this could be the end for Roger Federer. Do you agree? Probably not. Uh, this renaissance that's, that he's had over the last few years, almost Tom Brady-like in the sense that just when you thought that their careers were over, or at least the apex of their careers, they've got another chapter to write. You know what, Frederick, yes, he did lose, but this is not the end of him. You never know what tricks he has in his book. He's a supremely conditioned athlete. I think we have not seen the end of Roger Federer, not by a long shot. And we are not at the end of our conversation yet because now we have to get to baseball. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on. We, we haven't heard a lot about this lately, about the, the netting that's being extended in stadiums across the major, league, uh, major leagues. What's going on? What's the latest that you can tell us there? Well, one of the reasons why we haven't been hearing so much about it is that teams have been proactive and they have, have been installing it. The most recent team to make that extension all the way from home plate to the foul line, the Washington uh, White, uh, the Chicago White Sox, mm -hmm. excuse me, in their ballpark. They're seeing the reality of they need to protect their fans. Pitchers are pitching faster than ever before. 
players hitters the are stronger. The hitters are stronger. The construction of the bats. The ball is just coming off so much quicker than ever before. And it's not one of those situations where people need to pay attention in the stands. You can be paying attention, watching the path mm -hmm. of the ball. It just gets on you so quickly. It's very dangerous for a fan. It's going to change the viewing experience for fans going to the game. Let's let's take a look very quickly at a guy who was paying attention. Uh, this is uh, from yesterday. I called the catch of the day today. It was from yesterday. The Rockies, uh, Nolan uh, Arenado giving giving this one a ride right here. And take a look at this fan right there in the black, right center field. That was a pretty impressive grab. Right that there. was a pretty impressive With the first baseman's glove, by the way. With the first baseman's glove. And what you don't realize is that that tarp, he didn't land on a soft surface. Right. That black tarp is covering the outfield stands <sighs> that they put up there for the hitter's black eye, right. for the eye, so that they could see the ball a little bit clearer. So he's landing right on top of chairs, in Oof. essence. So anything for a home run ball, but again, He's got he's got that as a souvenir, and he's Probably got everyone talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Mike Baker, thanks so much for being here. Thank Appreciate you. your time.